All right, so we're in the shop. It's a day in the life of me. And this knife probably isn't sharp enough to do this correctly. One-handedly, well, I got a piece of alder here that I uh, picked up the other day. And uh, got to get it out of the plastic. And I'll set, whoops, set back up on the, uh, this is called Supreme Alder. It's got some knots, things like that, that you kind of have to work around or make sure they're in a pickup cavity or a cutaway or something. Uh, this was, it was a 10 foot piece. This is a two foot piece. They lobbed off the end of it to get it in the vehicle. And uh, so I'll get this unwrapped, set up over on the saw and we'll continue this discussion. So the first thing I think on the agenda uh, is to go ahead. Uh, this alder is for a custom strat build I'm doing. Um, not just a spec build, it's a, it's a client build. Uh, they, like I said, they cut the two feet off of here to get it in. I had a friend pick it up and they, to get it in her vehicle. They, uh, uh, apparently they cut it and then they dropped it because it's got a nice bang on the end of it. Not, not that it matters, but, uh, typically, uh, let me, let me point this out. So they got this knot on this edge, got a little knot right here. So what I'm going to do right now is just find out if I can get away from these things. So typically it was cut like this, just swing it around, put it here and then We'll get a strap template out and we'll kind of take a look at things. So we've got this wane here, uh, some chipping. Um, I might I might start from here and go down, we'll see. But let me grab a template. Let's uh, probably get away with Side, which is going to be the face and the back as well, so I don't end up with a left handed guitar here. Um, this is my outside edge, so if I make this the long side, this would be the face. I think, yeah, that would be the face because the long one is on top, and it's uh, if I just pull this in a little bit, that is in a pickup route or under under the pick guard anyway. Let's see I can put I have a lot of room here. I'll push it back. But I still have this little knot hole right here. Yeah, I'm just gonna skip that. Let's see what the rest of this board looks like. So now which way do I want to be? That makes me that makes me right handed. Okay, so if I do this, uh, where's my pencil? There's a chalk. This board flips around, comes over here, and there. And I have no defects here at all. What do I have if I do this? I have no defects here at all. So it looks like that's what I'm going to do. Just make it easy on myself. Just going to double check and make sure that I don't have any, that I'm building a right handed guitar. So I have to visualize myself on the other side of this piece of wood, holding it in the plain position. Yay, like so. And that's correct. So, uh, top face. And if I cut this, well, if I cut this, spin this one up around the bottom, which is the same difference as if I go like that then I have that and it's just dandy as well. Okay. B. 
B-Face. All right, so I'm going to uh, go out to the garage and grab my skill saw. You know, it didn't take a lot of uh, time or reasoning to decide that, you know, it was stupid to go chase my saw down when all I had to do was clear a little bit off the end of my bench so I could push the saw table down that way and then I'll just cut this right here and in my table saw, cross cut it. So here comes the, uh, the noise. template again make sure everything's looking good cut that off of there spin it around right there so the back end of this thing it's all good got uh, plenty of width here uh, I ended up getting a nine inch eight and a half inch wide board I am just going to joint these edges Make a good, uh, good, uh, good joint, good seam, and uh, and then glue this up. And there again, just the lines just help me remember where this has to be for the offset and the body. You know, horns, long horns. All right, this is another part of what has to happen every once in a while. I have one of these um, joiners with the she looks cutter heads and I've got a, a nick that went through all the way around so um, you won't see it in here but I've got there's a ridge right here uh, that is gonna screw me up so I'm uh, and that board I'm looking at the grain here that board went through this way which means that um, that nicked cutter is about an inch, I'm measuring, about an inch and a half away from the fence. Yep. So, just to get an idea of where we're at, we're, we're looking at right, right in here. Now, this cutter looks like it might have a chip in it as well, but it's not, it's not out in the range that, uh, that we're having trouble with. So, right in here, looks like this one just misses. Oh, I did unplug the machine. Did I already say that? I just double checked myself. Uh, and that one misses. So, where is it? I'm not seeing a nick. Oh, I feel something right there. Yep, that one feels chippied. I'll rotate it. And it doesn't appear that this one has been adjusted yet, so I have two more times to go. Not a very big Nick, I could probably sand that out, but I don't like sanding my my glue ups. I feel I'm gonna try to. Yeah, that should be it right there, but I'm not really feeling anything. It's got to be chipped though. 
I suppose I could try it and see because that doesn't really feel much, like much. Yeah, that's right in between. I'm gonna try it because that didn't that didn't feel like much there. That was it. Okay. Let's see how this all fits. I had to use my longer clamps because um, these being nine inch boards, eight and a half inch boards, my my 18 inchers uh, aren't quite long enough to do the job. So make sure that and that lines up well. Oops. You see my standard paper on my saw table arrangement. that groove in the middle of my saw that's just making everything difficult. All right, that's better. I know you guys have seen this a million times. Uh, not only from me, but from everybody in the world that's ever glued anything together as a YouTube channel. Um, I can't imagine that I'm going to do anything Amazingly different right here than what you're used to seeing, but even so We're uh, I shouldn't have Pulled those up quite so snug Here we go I'm going to use tight bond original uh, I've got some tight bond 3 I've been using it for various things uh, I'm Not sure could be in my head but it seems like I can see the, the line more. I've also been using fish glue a lot. But uh, this is a Strat copy. And, uh, and I'm just being facetious. I know Fender didn't use uh, fish glue, so I want it to be as close to Fender as possible. I'm not really sure what fender used. You know, I got a copious amount of glue on this baby. So, uh, once again, Steve, I keep, keep heckling my buddy Steve over, over on the island um, about how much glue you need in a joint. Rest assured, there's plenty of glue in this joint. It's going to, it's going to be everywhere. Um, and since I already set my clamps together, we'll do it this way. Well, maybe, maybe I'll do it this way. Yeah, it's just too tall to do it that way. All right, Dane. Being a knucklehead. There we go. Bring that together. Um, one other thing that I'll take the time to comment about here, whether or not it gets into the video or not, second guess myself during editing. Um, I always see people chasing glue joints around going, like, well, just gotta let it tack up for a while and then it'll stay where you put it. And it's like, who has that kind of time? Let's just put a clamp on the end so that it stays lined up uh, while well, we're putting some pressure on it because it's not going to go sideways. These boards are the same thickness so it's just centering this joint all up and then we can bring that in and squeeze it. There we go.
On to the 335. I already bent the sides for, and you will see that. Just, you have not seen that footage yet, but you will see that footage. Bent and actually glued up the sides for the 335. And uh, this, is, uh, this is going to be my great guitar build off uh, entry, uh, GGBO 21. Uh, this is not an official part of that video because they're limiting us or they're they're wanting to limit us so uh, you will see this as well or parts thereof uh, to try to streamline all that footage uh, so that um, okay here we go this is going to be the base and uh, consequently I grab a tape measure Consequently, the heel of the base neck is going to be wider than the heel of a 335. And I'll tell you, I started out building just another 335 when I bent these sides, and that's why I bent them. Uh, although, I don't know that I would have known that I would have thought about it uh, beforehand. But uh, this, is, this is designed for 2 and 3 16 which is exactly where it's at. Even though if I, you know, let's say I'm hitting up here in my, my deal. If I push these things up tight anyway, I'm probably more out to that. So what I'm going to have to do, okay, is um, I'm going to cut my center block in here so that it actually pushes these out of fuzz. So what's going to happen is we're probably going to be three sixteenths or something farther apart on each each side than a standard three three five uh, which doesn't mean a thing to me I mean that's that's no big deal so but what I have to do before I do anything with the body that's where I'm going with this if there's a if there's a path please help me take it uh, so I don't want to I don't want to finish saying this well I could finish saying it wouldn't be any big deal I don't want to cut this pattern out until I've established my neck and so I'm going to that's what I'm going to work on next I'm going to work on the base neck 30 inch uh, scale base neck and so I'm going to have got some uh, head scratching coming up here I don't have a pattern for this um, probably going to do just a little bit of research but I, uh, I'm planning on an inch and a half wide nut like a jazz base a fender <coughs> excuse me Fender Jazz Bass. Standard P Bass is an inch and five. Um, I'm not, you know, obviously there's an extra eighth in the in the equation there, so your strings are going to be a little farther apart at the nut. All right, so from what I could find in uh, researching this, uh, it actually looks like more commonly is a 30 and a half inch scale for a short scale. And I know that there's a... Uh, wrap the ends of bass strings and whatnot. I don't want to end up with the wrap being too long or too short. So I'm going to go with 30 and a half. So I uh, got back on the fret calculator, changed it to 30 and a half. Discovered also that 18, 18th fret seems to be where most of these things are connecting to the body. And uh, so I, I went ahead and uh, Found out where my 18th fret was, and I converted that to millimeters because it's more accurate in millimeters than uh, fractions. Well, maybe, maybe not. We'll double. We'll do it both ways. It says it's 19.72, so that's almost 19 and three quarters. So let's go that route. I'm off the end here. 19 and three quarters will be where it meets the body and then we'll do it in mill millimeters also which converted to 100 or excuse me 501 millimeter point 14 I'll tell you that 14 hard to measure so let's go five oh one we are We 
You're probably about, ooh, about a millimeter difference on that. Since it's, uh, we'll go right in the middle. We'll call that good. And uh, so basically, which way was it shorter? Yeah, 19. We're going to go 19 and 3 quarters. Just double check that. Yeah, just a fuzz over 3 quarter and a fuzz under the millimeter dimension, 501. Um, but that puts us, that puts our body joint right here and then uh, right here. Uh, let me see what that does to us on our, our 30 and a half scale length. Yeah, so that actually puts us closer to where we were. Um, did I move? No. All right, so it puts us a little farther forward than the third than it was before. I don't know what matter what difference that makes. There we go. Thirty point five. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Definitely, uh, because this isn't a base body, obviously. Definitely puts us farther back because the other ones were not quite this far from from that line on the F hole, which is really not relevant. But it's just a just something to, to take note of. Now the end of the board is right here or right here. Oops, making a mess. And uh, that is pretty much where this pickup is going to end. Uh, put my, I'm just going to double check myself is what I'm, what I'm basically saying. Put my uh, neck blind, my uh, template back here. All right, I got barely any battery life left. I went and I converted everything again, wrote it down. Um, yeah, I should have used a larger piece of paper. So, and I laid it out. Uh, I'm not sure you can see that. Okay, pull it back down here. So there's my nut. Time you're trying to lay something out with halfway decent accuracy, just tape your roll down so it's not floating around on you. Um, I did get all the way Get all the way through the end of the fretboard and it's in the same places the fretboard ended so I my original calculation was good uh, okay so up until this point with prepping the neck blank uh, I've done everything I was just doing earlier on the on the uh, Stratocaster just you know edging boards and uh, sizing things that's that sort of thing uh, so edging I mean you know running them through the joiner and so I'm just cutting some veneers. I know I uh, kind of left that up in the air as to whether I was going to do that or not. Uh, I decided to do that. And uh, if you take a, a lighter pass to begin with, which I didn't do, uh, you're more likely to follow the straight edge rather than the grain. Uh, and a couple places where I wandered with those right there. The first, the first piece cut tremendously well. So basically just burned up an entire piece of uh, black veneer on uh, on this. So if I want to use anything else um, in black on this build, I'm going to have to reorder some. Uh, I actually was thinking about doing a color and then I realized that the colors weren't long enough. The black and the white pieces are long enough, but not the colored didn't want to put white next to maple. I was looking for carbon fiber for this build. And finding the carbon fiber halfway affordably was a good trick, but then finding a company that would ship reasonably. Two pieces, basically a quarter inch square, four feet long. They wanted $40 for shipping. I just think that's ridiculous. I refuse to do that. I've always kind of held to that you don't really need carbon fiber. 
We've got a truss rod, uh, but I um, thought, well, it's a base. I'll go, I'll go ahead and put some carbon fiber in the neck. Then I decided I would just put maple in this in this neck uh, right down the middle, and that would certainly uh, reinforce it. Uh, and this is quarter sawn in that direction, top to bottom. So that's extra, extra strong. And so there, there you have it. All right, so I've got my two pieces of veneer cut. I have a center strip of maple and then my outer my outer pieces are mahogany and that gives me plenty I'm trying not to move my camera so it gives me plenty of width for my neck um, also not too concerned about, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not, I'm not tapering them. I have done tapered, tapered center cores, but this is, uh, such a narrow center core, um, that I don't really think that's necessary. I don't think it would, uh, I don't think it would add anything per se. So I'm just going that route. So that's what that will look like glued up the maple against the black against the mahogany. I was looking for my roller handle for my other uh, weenie rollers and I ran across this thing as, you know, buck somewhere. I'm uh, hoping this is firm enough to actually push glue around, but we'll see. And here we go. We're off. Kidoki. Don't tell me. I glued the wrong edge. <laughs> what a meathead. Crap. All right. Well, that I can deal with. Just got to get glue on here. Did any of you see that coming? So back to the Stratocaster holder uh, blank here. Just pulling the clamps off. It's been a couple hours easily. Few more than a couple. Uh, I'm not going to do anything to this. Um, used to be in woodworking circles, cabinetry and whatnot. There was some concern about um, processing material too quickly after it was glued up. Uh, not only that you might stress the joint, but um, the wood will swell up to some degree. And if you were to sand it all flush before it had uh, overnight to dry, um, then you might end up with a divot where the where the seam is. So you sand this all out flush now, and then it continues to dry, and and the the joint shrinks in on itself, and you get a little bit of a, a depression. Um, that used to be used to be a thing that got talked about. I don't know. Uh, all I can figure is that uh, we were we were using tight bond back then, so. 
maybe they decided it's not it's not an issue now. Okay, okay. I think I got about four rattle can coats of uh, sanding sealer on here. Stew. I don't know. I don't think I've videoed any of this so far. And I'm going to just, I may or may not be spraying. I'm just, I need to sand that out a bit. See if I'm flat enough for my decal. I think I might be. Which would be groovy. Because I can go put my decal on. Groovy for you millennials out there is uh, is what we used to say when we thought something was was uh, what's the word now? I don't even know what the word is now. Uh, we'll use real English and say when we thought something was great or terrific, we use the word groovy. Uh, millennials, comment and tell me what you say now. I should know. I work with work with millennials. Uh, okay, I, yeah, we're really, we're good. Uh, here, I'm going to go ahead and put a decal on that. I have to go get some warm water, though, and I'll be back. All right, so I have two of these. I, I basically got these uh, as a trial. I got three of them, and and I liked it. I, I did one on the Paisley Tilly, and you know what I'm talking about because... I've done a couple of videos on those, on that, that Telecaster. The next phase in that on the video is actually me doing the, 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 uh, the headstock detail, uh, decal. So, I, uh, I gotta say, I, I kind of fouled up on that one. Not that it came out bad, just that, uh, I didn't put any, any water on the, on the peg head before I, I had to put the decal on. I'm cutting this and I'm not paying attention to where the camera's at. Uh, probably a good idea to keep my eye on what I'm doing here. You try, you don't want to have really any straight lines, so the idea is to keep the lines as round, get it up here, sorry, as round as possible. Um, it turned out very, very nicely on, on the uh, Strat peg head. I said Paisley Telly, didn't I? Anyway, Paisley Strat. Um, I'm not sure how I want this. I think I'll just do it like that. Keep it all down here on the blondish part. So that should look okay. Putting staggered tuners on this so there won't be any string trees here to get in the way. Yeah, that'll be good. Um, I'm going to uh, trim a little bit off of here so that I, I don't have anything kind of going around that down the radius it's over here. It wasn't, but I'm also going to do the same thing here. Okay. So, yeah. I think that's going to look good. Um, all right. Now, the recommendation was, and I'll turn this down, so we're looking in the water, is that Kind of hold on to it when you first put it in. It keeps it from curling up as bad. And then we want to leave it in there for about 30 seconds. This water isn't hot. It's uh, It was warm, but now it's not really. <laughs> uh, so here's here's the part I missed. And I'll turn the camera up again. 
So part I missed was just splashing some water on here so that the decal can move around a bit when you're setting it. Now, uh, it doesn't have to, uh, you know, it doesn't have to move around a lot if you get it where you want it to begin with. Now, I've still got my uh, dust collector button on, so I'll set it aside so I'm not banging it into things. All right, I think that's been there long enough. Oh, what happened? Oh, it curled up the fuzz right there. Oh, that curled over too. Can't have that. So, uh-huh. Just, you seeing what's happening here? I'm just holding it with my thumb and sliding the paper out from under it. Uh, yep. And then I should be able to that's what I wasn't able to do before was kind of so now I'm looking at the top of the letters here against my my dark line coming through and I want them to parallel and they look really good actually shouldn't be any problem there just a fuzz now basically just want to get the water off of it and out from under it Going to uh, do the same thing. I'm going to hold on to the end of it here, here, and just kind of wipe it off. You don't want to get too crazy because uh, they did warn that you could tear or uh, rub the the writing off. But I watched a video of the guy, you know, the manufacturer demonstrating it, and they. They didn't look like they were being all that gentle. And this, I got to tell you, with that water under there, it went down a million times better. The other, the other one, even though it did dry and flatten itself out, it had some bumps and stuff under it, air bubbles or whatever. And this one doesn't have anything like that. It looks very, very good. So I'm very happy with that. They recommend waiting 24 hours before you do anything else to it. Lacquer-wise, that's what I'll do. And uh, they say that um, I'll have to go grab the. I did this on the on the Paisley. Uh, I did mention what uh, what brand it was. They're uh, a UK company, and uh, they talk about their film being extremely very very thin. And this is since it laid down so much nicer than the other one on the Strat. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any kind of problem here. I didn't have any on the other one. It just uh, just took a bit of a bit of coats and everything. Even on fenders, you can see the edge of the decal if you look through in the light the right direction. I can't, I can't see anything on my Paisley Strat, so I'm very very happy with that outcome. Anyway, there you go, the thousand dollar guitar uh, getting its decal. All right, so here's the Telecaster in question. Uh, this was a conversion neck. So it's a 23 and 5 8 scale, Gibson scale on a Telecaster body. Um, this is a neck I made. The standard strap kind of angle comes in like this and kind of goes straight across, you know, here. And is straight here and then just kind of rolls on top. Uh, they don't, you know, roll all the way up. They're straight for the angle and then they just roll where they intersect. He only wants to go to about three quarters of an inch here, which he's already uh, halfway there. Okay, so. And he wants to do, let's do, let's do it over. He wants to do that and actually kind of, you know, fade the whole thing around like, like that. So it's gonna go from three quarter to, to less, right? 
out that way and then out that way as well. So I'm just putting this down here as a rough guide. I'm not, um, I'm not that worried. Uh, but I am at three quarter there, so and then that will just have to fade away. And I will take that with a Shinto file rasp, saw rasp. Um, I'm also going to go about three quarters down this way. is not quite halfway. This body is only inch and five, inch and nine, so it's not as thick as a standard. I think this is a square body. Uh, I'm not going to go a full three quarter and then go back up to about five eighths there. Okay, and then the same kind of thing, we'll just angle it up. Angle it up. That'll be sweet. Okay, so put this pad on here so that I could kind of spin this around. I might have to move the camera a little bit. Uh, yeah, a little bit. And I, uh, I just used my sanding block and just put some a sanding block. All right, probably just got everything in my own way, but we'll see what happens. We'll start off course. Am I blocking the view? Of course I am. The camera over here. Okay, that's kind of an odd angle, but at least you can sort of see what's going on. Huh? trying to keep this on uh, more of a chamfer than a radius okay so I'm pretty much down well I'm not really down as far as I can go I got this here so, like I said I want to kind of want to keep it more of a straight chamfer than a, than a massive bull nose so the butt it's gonna It's going to vary to some degree because I'm going to hit it with a, uh, a random orbit sander. Okay, that was 100, 220, and I'm going to go 400. And uh, Uh, got some true oil here. 
um, and kind of digging it, you know. I, uh, I was only able to get a very small bottle of this in the past, and I kind of ran out in the middle, and then I couldn't get any more. And so now I was able to uh, get more. So I'm finding out what it actually, the result actually is when you have enough to finish the job. So I was a little disappointed before, but now I know that it actually does the job. And so that looks kind of cool. Actually, not staining it black first. I'm going to get a little, little on there and just let it soak in. And then I will uh, come back and wipe that off and take a little uh, paint thinner on top of the body and get the residue off the body as well. I'll just try to do that right now without taking any off the actual wood, raw wood. I did it. It's got a little bit of it. So that's what it looks like. Actually, it looks kind of cool like that. And uh, it's three quarters, three quarters in, about five eighths down. So, and it's rolled, no real sharp edges. So that's good. Okay, the card went dead, uh, or the battery went dead. I got a little bit left on the card, so let's wrap this up. Uh, I was literally seconds away. Really hoping to find a spoke adjust uh, rod that is about 21 inches, 20 and a half, I could live with. Um, but I need the same thing either way. So if I have uh, the pig head adjustment, I, I need to get, you know, 20 inches there again. I could probably live with 19, so we'll see. 19 to 20 on a pig head adjust and um, 20, 21 or fuzz less on a on a spoke on a spoke wheel adjustment. Really rather have the spoke wheel adjuster. I like spoke wheel adjusters on my builds. Uh, thanks for watching everybody. If uh, if you got all the way to the end here and you, you stuck it out, I just gotta say thanks. You're you're a rare breed. Uh, I know there are a few of you. Um, appreciate it. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments, all of you. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I, I know you usually do. Um, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Stuff. Hit the bell. Um, I know, I know you all know all that. Everybody knows how it works. Okay, so let's, uh, let's call it a day. Okay, see ya. Thanks again, everybody. Take care.